Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, in this episode of SRMJ Triple E Questions with Solution, we are going to be looking at some sample questions of SRMJ Triple E. This is an entrance exam that has been used to get admission to various colleges in India. So, in order to prepare for exams such as this one, it's very important that we look at sample questions and previous year questions in detail. So, here we are solving some sample questions. This exam consists of questions from physics, chemistry, math, and biology. So, we'll be looking at some of them from all the subjects. So, the first question from physics. The dimension of half epsilon naught e square where epsilon naught is permittivity of free space and E is electric field is ML square T power minus 2, ML raised to minus 1, T raised to minus 2, ML square T power minus 1, ML T power minus 1. So, which of these is the correct option? Well, in the usual way, you would find out the dimen dimensions of electric field and the permittivity of free space, and then you you know, use them accordingly. But if you look at the expression particularly, the expression here is half epsilon naught e square. Now this expression is equal to ue, and that is known as the energy density of the electric field. Now here we're using the term density. So density means the quantity that we have is divided by volume. So in this case we're looking at energy density. So it is energy divided by volume. So energy and work have the same dimension. So we, we will use the dimensions of work. The dimensions of work are ML squared T power minus 2. So work is basically force times displacement. So forces MLT power minus 2. Um, so that means, you know, the, the dimensions of energy are ML squared T power minus 2. Now volume is just L cube, so the dimensions of volume are L cube. Now when we solve the equation on the right, we have M raised to 1 and L raised to 2 minus 3. We use the law of exponents here a raised to m divided by a raised to n equals a raised to m minus n. And then finally we have t raised to minus 2. So if you were to do 2 minus 3 you'll get minus 1. So finally you get m l raised to minus 1 t raised to minus 2 as the correct dimensions of half epsilon naught e squared. Now remember, we're looking for the dimensions of the entire expression, not just any one of them, any one of the quantities here. So therefore, the correct answer here is option B, ML raised to minus 1, T raised to minus 2. Now, let's look at another question. This one's from chemistry. We need to find out the primary and secondary valency of platinum in the complex PTEN twice, CL twice. So basically, this is bis di. This one is bis ethylene diamine dichloro. I mean, it's dichloro bis ethylene diamine platinum two. So that's the name of this complex and we need to find out its primary and secondary valency. So first, we, let's define what are primary and secondary valencies. Now, the primary valency refers to the oxidation number of platinum. So in this case, in this compound, we know that platinum is a positive ion. En, that is ethylene diamine, is neutral while chlorine usually exists as negative ions. So, in order to find the oxidation number of platinum, we, should, we can count how many negative ions are present in this complex, and then put in the exact amount of charge on the positive side that will make this complex neutral. So, since we have 2 chlorine minus 
in the complex, the oxidation number of platinum will be plus 2. So therefore, the only option that's suitable is option B, 2, comma 6. In, op in the other options, the valencies are given as 4, 4, and 6, respectively, which is wrong. Here, we just need to find the oxidation number. Chlorine has a charge of negative 1. So each chlorine ion has a negative 1 charge. And since we have two ions here, platinum will have plus 2 as its positive charge. Now, how do we prove that the secondary valency is 6? Well, the secondary valency refers to the coordination number. Now here, we're basically dealing with a complex compound. So the central ion is platinum, and then various other ions, or, which are called ligands, attached to it. So the num so coordination number refers to the number of attachments to the central atom. Now, we could say the number of atoms which the central atom holds, but then the number of attachments would be a better term. The reason being that some ligands or atoms that bind to the central atom can bind in more than one way. In this case, we have EN, that's ethylene diamine, as a bidentate ligand. That means it binds with the central atom at two places. Also, we will have chlorine, which binds at one place, so that means it's unidentate. So if you were to look at the coordination number, the coordination number of the complex of the of platinum in this complex will be two times two plus two, which is four plus two, which is equal to six. So that means option B is the correct option. Now let's look at Another question, this one's from mathematics. So let's look at this math question. A relation R in the set of non-zero complex numbers is defined by Z1 relation R1 as Z1 minus Z2 divided by Z1 plus Z2. Now, this relation is real. Then we need to find out whether the relation is reflexive only, symmetric only, transitive only, equivalence. So, how do we solve this question? Well, we need to find out whether the re re relation is reflexive, symmetric, transitive, or an equivalence relation. So, first let's find out the reflexiveness of the relation. So, we know that Z1, Z1 related to Z2 gives us Z1 minus Z2 divided by Z1 plus Z2. We also know that the relation occurs in the set of non-zero complex numbers. So first we'll consider a number Z1, which belongs to the set of complex numbers minus zero. Now let's find out Z1 related to itself. So that means we will have to, you know, substitute Z1 in place of Z2. So we get Z1 minus Z1 divided by Z1 plus Z1. So that gives us 0 divided by 2 z2, 0 on the numerator. Whatever the denominator is, if there's a 0 on the numerator, you get a total of 0. And 0 by itself can be written down as 0 plus 0i. And since the imaginary part is 0, the number that is 0 is a real number. So that means z1, when related to itself, gives us a real relation. So, therefore, the relation R is reflexive. So that means option A can be true, right? Well, let's move on. Now, let's look at whether the relation R is symmetric or not. So we'll consider Z1 related to Z2 that gives us z1 minus z2 divided by z1 plus z2 as a real relation. So we'll consider this relation as real. So if this is real, then there certainly will be a negative as negative part of this as well. So 
if z1 minus z2 divided by z1 plus z2 is real, then the negative of z1 minus z2 divided by z1 plus z2 is also real. Now the minus only affects the numerator. So we'll put in the minus sign on the numerator. So negative of z1 is minus z1, negative of minus z2 is z2. So you get z2 minus z1 on the numerator and z2 plus z1 on the denominator. You can interchange the sides on addition, but you can't do that on subtraction. So z2 minus z1 divided by z2 plus z1 is real. So that means z2 related to z1 belongs to the set relation R. So that means we can write the relation R is symmetric. So we know that the relation is both reflexive and symmetric. And in our options, options A, B, C says that it's reflexive only, symmetric only, transitive only. So these three options are incorrect because of the term only. It cannot be only reflexive because we found out that it's symmetric. It cannot be symmetric only because we found out that it's reflexive. And it cannot be transitive only because it's both reflexive and symmetric. So the only correct option at this stage is option D, an equivalence relation. An equivalence relation is a relation which is both reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. But let's prove this answer is correct. So for that, we need to prove that the relation R is transitive. So how do we do it? To prove that the relation R is transitive, we will consider Z1 related to Z2 and Z2 related to Z3 as real. So that means Z1 minus Z2 divided by Z1 plus Z2 and Z2 minus Z3 divided by Z2 2 plus z3 are real. So how do we solve this further? Since we need to find we need to prove that z1 related to z3 is also real in order to make this transitive, but how do we prove it? Well, let's consider z1, z2, and z3 as are as complex numbers. So we will consider z1 as x1 plus i y1 z2 is equal to x2 plus i y2 and z3 equals x3 plus i y3. So we will consider that these are the values of z1, z2, and z3 respectively. So we will use the condition for z1 minus z2 divided by z1 plus z2 and then we'll apply that for the second part as well in order to prove that r is transitive. So z1 minus z2 divided by z1 plus z2 is real. Now we'll put in the values of z1 and z2. So that means x1 plus iy1 minus x2 plus iy2 divided by x1 plus iy1 plus x2 plus iy2 is real. So when we you know, rearrange this further to form real and imaginary parts, we have x1 minus x2 plus i times y1 minus y2 divided by x1 plus x2 plus i times y1 plus y2 considered as real. So in this stage, we see that the denominator contains a imaginary part. So we have to take its conjugate and multiply that with both the numerator and denominator. The objective here is to make the denominator real. So for that, we will take x1 minus x2 plus i times of y1 minus y2 divided by x1 plus x2 plus i times y1 plus y2. And the conjugate here is x1 plus x2 minus i times y1 plus y2 divided by 
minus i times of y1 plus y2. So the denominator will be a, will be considered as a plus b times a minus b. So you get a square minus b square in the denominator. So that will be x1 plus x2 the whole squared minus of i squared. i times i is i squared. i squared is equal to negative 1. So minus of minus 1 gives you plus. So the sign changes to plus. And then we have y1 plus y2, the whole squared. On the numerator, you have x1 minus x2 plus i times of y1 minus y2 as one bracket. And it's multiplied with x1 plus x2 minus i times y1 plus y2. And this is real. Now what we do is we separate the real and imaginary parts again, since we have a lot of i terms in here. So we'll multiply and then separate. So x1 minus x2 times x1 plus x2 is real. So x1 plus x2 times x1 minus x2 is, a, is real. And then we have i times y1 minus y2 into minus i times y1 plus y2. So since we have two i's, that will make it positive as well. So minus of minus 1 gives you plus, And then y1 minus y2 times y1 plus y2. And then we will look at the imaginary terms. So i times x1 minus x2 times y1. I mean, basically, what we'll do is we'll take x1 plus x2 times y1 minus y2. Then we put a minus sign. And then we'll get x1 minus x2 times y1 plus y2. And here, the denominator will be x1 plus x2 squared plus y1 plus y2 squared. Now remember, we told you that z1 minus z2 divided by z1 plus z2 is real. And what does that mean? It means that the imaginary part of z1 related to z2 will be equal to 0. For a number to be real, its imaginary part has to be 0. And what is the imaginary part here? The imaginary part is this bracket. So let's rewrite it x1 plus x2 times y1 minus y2 minus x1 minus x2 times y1 plus y2. This expression is equal to 0 because this is the imaginary part. And the imaginary part is 0 because the number is considered to be real. So that means we'll have to multiply again x1 y1 plus x2 y1 minus x1 y2 plus, I mean, it's again minus, sorry, x2 y2. Then we have a negative sign here. And then we have x1 y1 minus x2 y1 plus x1 y2 minus x2 y2. So let's re rewrite this again. x1 y1 plus x2 y1 minus x1 y2 minus x2 y2. And then we put the minus inside the bracket. So you get minus x1 y1 plus x2 y1 minus x1 y2 plus x2 y2. And this is equal to 0. So x1 y1 gets canceled x2 y2 gets canceled we have two we have here 2x2 y1 and then we have minus 2 times x1 y2 and that equals 0 so we'll take the 2 common so you get 2 times x2 y1 minus x1 y2 as equal to 0 when you take 2 to the denominator the right hand side still becomes 0 
So you have x2, y1 minus x1, y2 equals 0. That means x2, y1 equals x1, y2. So what we get is x1 divided by y1 equals x2 divided by y2. We'll consider this as equation number 1. So we know that x1 by y1 equals x2 by y2 as, e as equation 1. So we will well, so when we were to do this similarly with the second part, you will get x2 by y2 equals x3 by y3. So this is equation 2. Now from both from, from equation 1 and 2, we will get x1 by y1 as equal to x3 by y3 because they're because the one of the sides on both equations are the same, so they have to be equal. Now, if this relation is fa is correct, then we can write z1 is related to z3 becomes a real relation, and that means R is transitive. So we know that R is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. That makes option D R is an equivalence relation correct. Now let's look at the final question of this episode. This one's from biology. The question is simple. Binomial nomenclature was given by Darwin, Linnaeus, Lamarck, Theophrastus. Now this is a theory question and if you've studied the chapter biological classification you know that Linnaeus is the person who you know introduced binomial nomenclature so option B is correct. Option A, Darwin is incorrect. He is mostly associated with the theory of evolution. Then we have Lamarck, who is, you know, associated with the theory that acquired characters can be inherited. This is popularly known as Lamarckism, and it's was and this theory was disproved. So option C is also incorrect. Option D is Theophrastus. Theophrastus is popularly known as the father of botany which means that he was the pioneer of the study that's called botany, so that means option D is also incorrect. The correct answer is option B, Carolus Linnaeus was the person who introduced binomial nomenclature. He wrote the first book, Genera Plantarum, which introduced this concept. So that concludes this episode of SRMJ Triple E Questions with Solution. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, which is Brain Blitz Audios. We have a lot of content present at Brain Blitz Audios. Don't forget to hit the link for our playlist in the description box down below. So, until the next episode, take care, stay safe. Bye-bye for now.